Well, 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 <clears throat> it's 444. I don't think I've done a video at that time for a little while. <laughs> and it's actually Saturday afternoon, and this will be the video for Sunday. For tomorrow, it'll go up sometime in the morning tomorrow. I've been posting them between 3 and 4 a.m. in the morning, uh, scheduling them, which is an interesting thing. And today, as I was contemplating what to talk about, I mean, I almost did a video this morning, but I just wasn't quite in the space to do it. And uh, there's a lot of things actually going on in my in my life that I that I wish I could talk about, but they're not. It's premature to talk about some of them at this point. But there are interesting things happening in the world. And what I finally this afternoon decided to go ahead and, and talk about, and here's the title, Courts and Banks Operate an Extortion Racket. And here's the blurb that I wrote. As I listened to my friend, Peter Van Wright Runt, interview a man named Rick on yesterday's Double Dutch Radio, and by the way, I put the link to it down below in the blurb, uh, I couldn't help but think how many people are now realizing what I have seen for a long time. They were talking about the injustices of the court system in America and around the world. Indeed, those actors that call themselves judges are in bed with the banksters that are looting the assets of the people of the world. It's fraud, folks. Theft of value and human slavery. It is an extortion racket. However, many people are waking up to these sad realities of our world and doing something about it. Grand juries are being formed, lawsuits filed, and whistleblowers like Karen Hudas speaking openly about the fraud. The awakening continues, and the world will change as truth does what it always does, set us free. And then I have the link, and I just see that I have an extra letter in one of these words that doesn't need to be there, so I just took it out. <laughs> anyway, yes, Karen Hudas, I mean, she's been a, a champion. Now, bear in mind that this lady was, for 21 years, the lead counsel for the World Bank. I mean, she's an attorney. And you know I don't feel wonderful about attorneys. She's a banker. And you know I don't feel too too wonderful about bankers. But I do feel wonderful about whistleblowers, whether they're attorneys, bankers, or whatever they may be, when they start telling the truth. Because as I said in the blurb, truth does what it always does. It sets us free. And a lot of people are afraid of the truth, especially truth they consider negative. But until we face the negative truths and the negative realities of our world, we will never fix them. We will never bring resolution or, uh, or actually get remedy because the courts don't give remedy. They play a game. They speak a different language than everybody else. They create these, these contracts that are not really contracts. It's, again, more fraud, more corruption. They, they use the words differently than you and I are taught the word so that even if we're fairly intelligent, if we don't understand the diff the legal definitions as they mean it, from their point of view, we're entering into a contract with them. Now, they're v not valid contracts, but that is irrelevant to them. They will still attempt to enforce contracts, whether they're valid or not. And none of them, none of them are valid. All that our courts do, all that our politicians do, all that the banks do is null and void. It's all fraud. I want you to understand that. If you don't understand anything else that's going on in the world, you need to understand that one because that is the basis of all the injustices. That is the basis of all the, the poverty. That is the basis of all the, uh, the violence, all the wars, all the, uh, the arming of terrorist groups, of poor people that, that have an ax to grind and they're being armed by the, by the bankers and by the governments. They're being sold arms and weapons so that they can create instability in our world. All of it is traceable to this embeddedness of bankers and, uh, and the courts and our court system. Of course, the media plays a big role in it also because they are part of the problem as well, although I didn't name that in the blurb. But Karen Hudas is one of the ones that is blowing the whistle and blowing it loudly and getting a lot of airtime around the world. And she has she said plainly in one of her recent interviews that the gold and actually all of the assets of the world belong to the people. Of course it does. And it belongs to all of us. 
not a little bit of, not a small group of a few hundred people that sit at the top of the world and want, and want to control everything for their own benefit. And one of my friends, of course, it was Neil, uh, wrote to me and says, they are holding, they are holding our assets in trust. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. They are holding our assets and our asses, not in trust, but in bondage. And until we wake up and we make them speak the same language that we do, no, Neil, we don't have to learn the language that they speak. They need to start speaking in truth and not fraud and not committing crimes against humanity. That's what they need to do. They're the ones that need to change, not us. We have a right to our own assets. We have a right to our own value. And Peter Van Runt and this man named Rick, I, I apologize that I should have gone back and listened, but I only wrote the blurb within the, within a half an hour of doing the video and the, the part of that uh, video that, uh, that he's talking about. I mean, I know it's around 78 minutes and I put that in there that they start, but I didn't, I didn't catch, I don't remember them saying what Rick's last name is. And I think that was a, it was like not even a last name that, that Peter gave, uh, it was Rick and like something that he does or, or a, like a handle or something. But I apologize that I don't remember that. But in any case, I mean, they were talking about how horribly corrupt the system is. And they were talking about it, uh, as I recall. And, and I say as I recall because I watch so many things and listen to so many things that I don't always remember who said what where. And, and I apologize also for that, that, I'm, that I maybe should take notes and be more clear for you. But I want you to know that people are speaking up and these grand juries are being formed. And the International Court of Justice is at work and lawsuits are being filed. And some judges are actually probably starting to do the right thing. But in general, the judges are part of the, are part of the corruption. So you don't get much justice in courtrooms because courtrooms operate on a totally different system. It's a system of fraud. It's a system of corruption. And no, Neil, they are not doing us any favors by doing this. They are not doing us favors. And it's not about polarizing the world against the judges and against the bankers. It's about waking up to the problem so that everyone can be held accountable. It's not about punishing anybody, even. It's about holding people to the responsibility that they take on when they serve as a corporate entity. They, they owe an obligation actually to a public trust, but they don't look at it that way. To them, it's just a matter of patting their own bed and, and, uh, and putting, uh, putting stuff in their own pot for their own benefit, and it, they could care less about people. And this attitude needs to be brought to the people's attention so that all of us can wake up together and we can end the polarization. I'm not, ta I'm not polarizing people by talking about this. I'm unpolarizing people. The ones that are polarizing people are the ones that, that sit in these high, high ivory towers and finance all of the corruption in the world and keep the corruption and keep the matrix going. These are the people that we need to pay attention to and they're the ones that are causing all of the problems on the world. Now granted, I'll give you this Neil and I'll give you this the rest of you who think that we need to wake up as a population. We sure do, but we've been hypnotized. We've been brainwashed. The majority of people are clueless about what's really going on in the world and they're kept that way on purpose by the mainstream media, by our, our religious and educational institutions, and of course by the corporate interests of those that play these games at the multinational and global levels. And they're trying to create treaties that uh, take away our rights. How many rights are, they going, are we going to have to give up before enough people wake up and we stop these people from committing crimes? The people that belong in jails are the people who are sending people to jails. Most of the people that are actually in jails don't belong there. They have not committed actual crimes. They have not caused anybody loss. They have not committed harm to anyone except maybe themselves. And they have not uh, violated the free will of anyone. They have done things that the state makes a crime and we cannot commit crimes against the state because the state is not a real person. 
I don't care how many rulings of the Supreme Court and other courts say that, that corporations and, and things can be persons. No, they can't. They cannot be people. People are flesh and blood and living and have unalienable rights, have natural rights. And that was something else that, that Rick was talking about. The, uh, I wish I could remember his name. Besides Rick, I do remember that it was Rick. Uh, but in any case, we are realizing how they have used words like person. All right, I'm a person. But the legal definition means I'm a slave. It, to them, it means that I'm in their jurisdiction and they have the right to, to tell me what to do. They have the right to extort my assets. They have the right to throw my ass in jail if they so choose to. That's their meaning of person. That's their meaning of citizen. All of these words that they pervert, and when I, and then when they ask, do you understand? And if I say yes, that means I'm standing under their jurisdiction and I'm going along with their fraud. And they look at that as creating a contract with them. It's not creating a contract, Neil. It's not. They are committing fraud. Get that point. The, these, these courts, these courts and these banks are committing fraud against humanity. They are committing crimes against humanity and they need to be answerable to we the people who are forming citizens grand juries who are not which are not part of the government they are they are overseeing the government and calling the government to task for what it's supposed to do it is supposed to be the rule of law but the rule of law is common law the united states was established under common law the state of florida in which i live was established under common law and that has been violated in, in the United States since 1871 when the corporations took over. And the corporations are a foreign entity. The Bar Association and everybody that's part of the Bar, that's a foreign entity. And they are committing crimes by operating in the United States, calling themselves attorneys, calling themselves judges, and, and running for political office and calling themselves representatives and senators and presidents. These are committing crimes against humanity crimes against the Constitution, crimes against the people of the world, not just the United States, but the entire world is involved. And I want you to get this, folks. This is so important because as long as we allow them to keep playing this game and taking advantage of our brothers and sisters, who oh, many of whom are absolutely clueless, as long as we allow this game to continue, we will not have peace on earth. There will not be justice. There will not be a liberation of humanity. It will not happen. Now, I, there's some things that I, that I believe are happening, that I'm uh, in contact with people all over the world that, that are visionaries like myself, and we do see things breaking through on a spiritual and on the physical level, that we're breaking through and we're creating things that will, that will help set us free and help usher in the golden age where, as Karen Huda says, the gold belongs to the people. Indeed, and we actually are the gold. We are the dross that gets transformed by all this heat and pressure that's going on. We get transformed into living gold and living silver. And the value is ours. It's always been ours. It belongs to all of us. All of the things on the planet, all of the resources belong to us, the people, because we were given dominion over the earth. We were given the right to, uh, to live on this planet, and we should not have to be in bondage to money and to a financial system of fraud in order to survive on this planet. And yet that's exactly the world that we live in. That's exactly what the matrix is. And it's time that we, that we each take responsibility for it and for ourselves and we, and we can change it. The power is always in the bottom of the pyramid. It's never been at the top of the pyramid. That's crazy. And yet the top of the pyramid, we've allowed the people that sit in those ivory towers in the top penthouse of the, of the pyramid, the eye of the pyramid, we allow them to rule over us like we're nothing. Folks, we are something and the inheritance is ours. The earth is ours and the fullness thereof. The creator gave it to us. It's ours and we have the responsibility and the capability of taking it back if we will only wake up and take action. 
I think that's about all I'm going to share today. I thank Peter and, and this man named Rick. I, I need to get in touch with him somehow because I like a lot of things that, that he shared with Peter. And actually, there's a lot of people around the world that I'd like to get in touch with, and I am in touch with a lot of people, but there's many more that I would, wouldn't mind getting in touch with. So if you have a chance, listen to the, the interview. It's about a, approximately a half an hour long because I remember Peter saying at the end that... Uh, uh, that he needed that the 30 minute mark was almost reached so I, I think it probably went about 30 minutes uh, although I didn't time it oh I guess I did sort of because I think it ended at 106 it started at 78 minutes and ended at 107 minutes or something like that but anyway uh, listen to it if you have a chance the link is the link is in the blurb it's worth listening to and again that's my friend Peter who was unable to do a video with me this week but I sort of got through the Double Dutch Radio, I got to hear him anyway, and uh, I'm grateful for all that he's doing and all that many people are doing. Karen Hooters and and many people around the world are playing a role in helping to liberate humanity from this fraud and the corruption operated by the banks, the courts, the politicians, the media, and the whole matrix system of our world. Again, thanks for listening. Namaste. <laughs>